Hi Taurus, so I hope that you are doing well. This is a general reading for any sun, moon, or rising Taurus. We'll see the big ideas or awareness for the week. We'll get some guidance, look at possible outcomes, and we'll get additional information from the Oracle card. So let's just go ahead and get started with your reading. Okay. Your awareness for the week is a sense of taking a time out that you need to have some solitude. You need to take a break from a situation maybe that's been challenging or has been on your mind. And now's the week to pull back and to maybe give yourself some space where you can meditate, where you can pray, where you can simply feel rested. That restfulness is going to help you recover. It's going to re-energize you. It doesn't mean that the situation is going to disappear, but you're going to return to it. And I feel that you're going to return fresher. You're ready to roll. You might even have a new perspective. And I say that because here's the hanged man, major arcana. So the hanged man here is in suspension and he's perhaps willing to sacrifice at this time. And and doesn't seem to be too upset about it, is okay with it. The hangman asks us to look at things differently through a different lens, that the standard or the uh, routine way of thinking isn't happening now. You're best served by really, if you flip yourself upside down, you see things differently, that you may need a new approach as you're dealing with the situation this week that whatever has happened before isn't, isn't working maybe, and that you need to come in with a fresh approach. And physically, you're refreshed, you're re-energized, you're restored. Mentally, you need to come in thinking from a different angle, perhaps. There's always a sense of willing sacrifice here. You're willing to do what it takes. But how we look at a situation it has to come from a different perspective. Okay, so we have the High Priestess, Major Arcana, in terms of guidance. Right off the bat, the High Priestess is telling you to make your intuition an important part of the week. Trust what's going on within your life with respect to the messages that you sense, that you feel, that pop up in dreams, on license plates, uh, random things that people say. And so the High Priestess, that book on her lap, that's the book of knowledge, and that's the book of knowledge for you. And again, there's a sense here of being passive, of allowing yourself the stillness to meditate, to reflect, to dig below the surface, what's going on below. Are there things that you're keeping in reserve that you're not ready to share or to explore? There's a sense of mystery sometimes with the high priestess of what, what's going on here. But I feel that one of the biggest messages here is to trust your intuition and let your intuition your hunches guide you. Don't toss something aside, you know, consider it and think about it. When those messages come in, oh, we could say, oh, that was nothing. But, you know, take a moment to really reflect and how does it impact your thinking for the week? Your intuition could certainly affect here what's happening with this new approach. So then in terms of guidance, in addition to trusting your intuition, there's a sense here that this is about hard work. This is about careful planning the pentacle way, the knight of pentacles. He's observing, he's holding the pentacle, he's thinking about how am I going to make a better foundation? How am I going to get more pentacles? How am I going to harvest these things? He's going to do it by being devoted by being loyal, by 
doing what's necessary in terms of leadership, showing up and getting it done. Pragmatic, common sense approach. Not gonna rush in, gonna take his time and whenever the result happens, it happens. But this is a sense that you know that you've put in the work and that you've put in the planning to be able to get to a point of building um, a firmer foundation financially or within a relationship. You know, this is putting in the work and this is really being devoted to the outcome. Okay, so we have as the outcome, the Page of Pentacles. So we're getting a real strong sense here that the idea of research, of knowledge and gaining information is going to assist you. It's going to help you. The page is this youthful energy who wants to grow and become more experienced when it comes to managing resources, to investing, to learning about business, and so he's an eager student. So with your hard work, there's also this element that where you may be studying the potential of a situation, you may be studying a way to improve your current situation. So taking a time out from a situation, reflecting, re-energizing and meditating, whatever is happening in your life of coming in with a new approach, trusting your instinct with respect to this new approach, listening for the messages to help guide you, all the while, while doing what you need to do in order to affect an outcome, to make something into reality. It's the hard work below the surface. And it also means being knowledgeable, learning, and having the excitement of bringing this new uh, intelligence into play. So where does that lead us in terms of possible outcomes? Well, here's the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is a card where we see this merchant, this man, sitting here, very pleased with what he has. And he has abundance. He has these Nine Cups behind him. And we may feel that these nine cups are the result of smart planning, of hard work, of trusting his instinct, of sacrificing, of resting and pacing himself accordingly as he is moving forward to build a firm foundation. And here's the reward. This is enjoy what you've worked for. You've got comfort now. You've gotten what you're been putting your mind to, enjoy it. And as we know, the Nine of Cups is also a card about wish fulfillment, of making a wish, setting your intention, and it should come true. But sometimes, you know, things come true when you apply yourself, when you work hard, when you sacrifice, and when you Trust yourself and know yourself, and you know what makes you tick. You know, wish fulfillment as a result of your actions, of what you're, what you're bringing to the table. Let's get a card here for meditation or focus area for the week. Oops, I'm going to write that upside down. Okay. Traveling lightly. Simplify your life. Simplify your life. Traveling lightly. So it means not being bogged down by things. And I would take that as traveling lightly would be to declutter, to not only declutter the stuff, but the thoughts that don't serve you or the people that don't serve you either. So let's see what we have in terms of messages for spirit or emotional self.
self-sabotage. When you learn to get out of your own way, there will be no stopping you. Most of the time, it's not others who prevent you from achieving your true goals. It's that inner voice that derails those carefully woven plans. And so self-sabotage, we all do it. It all pops up. But I would say to, again, when you are able to trust your instinct and your intuition and when you know yourself and what makes you tick, then the instances, the instances if I can say that correctly, of self-sabotage are reduced. And finally, let's choose a card for love and see what the message is for love. Focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life. So for all situations, in work, in your relationship, in your friendships, in your family relationships, focus on the good. And sometimes it's hard because uh, people are complicated, relationships are complex, and you know, again, I think the focus on love, it goes to the matter of simplifying your life. Of really what counts, what matters most. So this is what I have for you for the week, and I hope that something here resonates with you. If it does, then please subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, or comment. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope that you have a terrific week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.